Vamos carajo, brothers and sisters, boys, and welcome back to another episode of South Stand Signings, the series. Of course, we go through everything happening in and around the world of Easy and I said, and we have a little talk about it. And yes, it is that time of the day again, that time of the day where Leeds United are linked with every guy under the sun. We're talking defenders, midfielders, forwards, and it's time to get our gnashes dug into all of that juicy information. Just quickly before we do get into the rest of the video, there are a hell of a lot more of you who have just joined us very recently since we've been doing these transfer videos. And as you'll see in these videos, we like to break down some statistics. However, one statistic that is brutally alarming is that 77.2% of you are not subscribed. We are moonwalking our way up there. So if you could please help support me, support you by smashing that subscribe button down below then that would be very, very much appreciated. Now, on to the rest of the video. And the first story coming out of Leeds United is the dream duo that we could form with Sander Burge signing. That is right, Leeds are closing in further and further into that Sander Burge deal. I was telling you yesterday about how this deal was only going to progress once more information about Calvin Phillips has come out. More information has come out, and we will be getting into that a little bit later on. However, 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 however... I know you guys love that one. <laughs> However, it does look like that does mean we are pursuing more on Sander Burge. That is right. Leeds United are set to make a duo of dreams with Sander Burge coming in. This summer has been full of good news for Leeds so far, but they are star staring down a barrel by seeing their two best players leaving Rafinha and Calvin Phillips. That is right. It started off amazing, but this summer is looking a little bit bleak right now. And the only thing I want bleak is the midwinter, not the summer, my man. Um, the latter is the subject of intense interest from Manchester City and if he does leave a replacement will need to be sourced despite the addition of Mark Roker obviously mate I saw you guys talking yesterday actually about how you still want to go in for Kamara I thought you guys would be all over this Sander Burge thing I was obviously asking you if you could get Raskin Burge or Adams you can only get two of the three I was hearing some people even saying Raskin and Kamara which I'm not too sure and I do really like the look of Tyler Adams and Sander Burge and those would be my two but you guys may know more than me the Spaniard is an exciting signing, even if he didn't play a great deal for Bayern Munich last term, obviously. He has the technical ability and defensive know-how to have a big impact in the middle for Leeds. He does, but he is relatively unproven yet. You could argue that Sander Burge is slightly more proven because of the fact he has featured, although very briefly, he has featured in the Premier League. Midfield has been an area of concern for a while now, and that extends back to the days of Bielsa in charge. Leeds typically struggle without Phillips. Big time, we struggle without Phillips, and it does look like we're making more of a move for Sander Burge and it is now looking like that 25 million pounds is the exact valuation that could be on the table. Sheffield United want uh, want the money. They want big money for him. Obviously, he has that 35 million pound release clause. I don't think we will be triggering that. I think we will instead be making this move here for what is going to be 25 million pounds. Once lined up for a move to Liverpool, it's not quite happened for the Norwegian English footballer yet, but the complete midfield in the words of Chris Wilder, can seemingly do it all. Complete midfielder. Don't know why uh, why they've said complete midfield here, but the complete midfielder can seemingly do it all. And that does offer us more versatility. Now, this is very interesting. I did want to bring this up with you guys as well. With the whole Nicola Raskin thing, they were kind of gassing him up to be a bit of a clitch replacement. And I was hearing what you guys said, and you kind of agreed with me a little bit that he wouldn't really fulfill that attacking midfield role as well as someone like Klitsch. And he's more of like a, a versatile guy who can do both. So all he really is is, uh, is a cheaper version of Sander Burge, right? Right now, uh, you could argue, you know, someone that can play both defensive midfield and attacking midfield, you know, jack of all trades, master of none kind of guy. And I think that Sander Burge is probably a better option if we are going to go for one of those things. Would you argue that it's good to have two very similar players? I'm not so sure. However, it does look like Sander Burge is the one we're going for, even though there have been strong links to Nikola Raskin. His past completion rate of 88% is also eye-catching, showing that he knows how to keep the ball and find a teammate. Obviously, the guy's played in attacking midfield and defensive midfield, so he better be good on the ball. He better be good on the ball. Someone who isn't is Tyler Adams, but I still think Tyler Adams could be a 
good acquisition. But let's move on from that one and move on to the stance on the 25-year-old's potential Premier demand. League action. We spoke yesterday about how Jack Harrison does not want to be sold, or rather, <laughs> Leeds don't want to sell Jack Harrison. After three years on loan with Leeds from Manchester City, Harrison finally made his move to Ellen Road permanent last summer. The winger went on to score eight goals and 35 league appearances. He did. Since then, Harrison has emerged as a subject of interest from elsewhere, with fellow Premier League sides Newcastle and Tottenham said to be eyeing the winger this summer. According to the latest update, Leeds have no intention of selling Harrison. However, one thing that I didn't touch on yesterday, and the reason I am bringing this up again, is the fact that he does only have two years left on his contract. Now, what do you do in that situation? Because if you don't sell him this year, or you don't tie him down to a new contract, then next year he's going to be going for a very, very cheap, and we could be in a big, uh, big dangerous situation. Now, what I would say is I don't think we can afford to sell him, because if we are losing both Phillips and Rafinha, we cannot afford to lose three big players look whatever you think of Harrison whatever you want to say about Harrison those are three pivotal players who have played the majority of Leeds's games over the past three to four years I know Phillips was injured last year but over the period since Bielsa has taken over and now Marsh those three have played a significant amount of minutes for Leeds United and to rip three of them out of the team and try and throw in about seven or eight new players and expect them to quickly jump into the side like that it's not very likely to work out very well uh, you need to keep some consistency within the side and the side selection now what do you do with Harrison then do you basically bite the bullet and go all guns blazing on him sign him down to an extra two year deal and let him uh, let him get a, a little bit of a wage increase whatever the hell he wants and keep him at Leeds for another few years or do you say we just want to you know we'll, we'll, we'll bite the bullet this time on losing money on Jack Harrison and we'll instead keep him for a year see what happens, see if he improves or not, see if people still want to come in for him and worse comes to worse, lose him on a free in a couple of years time, but still get those couple of years out of him while we rejuvenate and rebuild the squad and get other players in. That could be a potential way you look at it. I think ideally you want to sign him down to, a, to another two year contract because you don't want to lose that kind of value in him. And with a player usually coming up with two years left on his contract, if he doesn't want to sign a new one, I would always tell you to sell him. However, because of the precarious situation that leads are in right now I do not think we can afford to but let me know what you guys think about that one down below and back on the uh, the case of Sander Burge now Leeds United handed release clause boost over potential replacement for key man the report from the Sheffield Star claimed that the Blades may not demand the full payment of the midfielder's release clause if he is to be sold this summer Burge is one of a number of players who have been identified as a potential target for Leeds already in the summer transfer window speaking recently Eurosport journalist Dean Jones suggested the Sheffield United midfielder could be a target to replace Calvin Phillips he could indeed instead of charging their 35 million pound release clause it is suggested that the Blades will accept some form of return on the 22 million pound investment they made when they signed Burge back in January and that 22 million pound investment or the return on that 22 million pound investment is rumored to be 25 million pounds this is what we were just talking about a second ago and this is what i'm talking about man we're not gonna have to pay that whole 35 million this is why it's so lucky Leeds didn't get relegated is you lose so much valuation on these players the guy was bought for 35 for 22 million pounds he had a 35 million pound release clause originally they were thinking that they were going to be unlucky to have that activated and now despite him playing pretty well because of the fact that there is so much financial uh, strain on championship clubs they'll be lucky to make that 22 million pound back they are caving worse than Leeds United with Rafinha and speaking on that Rafinha thing quickly uh, there was a story uh, circulating about Rafinha and Barcelona's links and about how Rafinha is closing in on on a deal of Barcelona and how the reason why Leeds's valuation is going down for Rafinha is because of the fact that the two have a gentleman's agreement Rafinha and the board and the board have basically said you can go to Barcelona so we're going to accept it for a cut price now first of all got no problem with the gentleman's agreement make any Kind of gentleman agreement you want but you still got to say let me hold firm for my valuation over here and those stories may not even be true because look uh, when have gentleman agreement ever gentleman's agreements ever held up in football what you have to look at is the harry kane situation a few years ago he had a gentleman's agreement to go to manchester city and daniel levy basically turned around and said sod off mate you're staying here fella unless if they want to pay a hundred million pounds or whatever the hell it was for him so we have seen in the past that these gentlemen's agreement don't really mean jack did squat and I think we should hold firm for a higher valuation from Rafinha and um 
And it's kind of weird because there's a lot of contradictory information. You've got Fabrizio Romano saying that we're going to stay firm for 50, 50 million euros, which is still the 43 million pounds. You've got other journalists coming out saying, no, we still have a 60 million pound valuation on his head. And he actually got a comment yesterday saying, would you rather sell him for 45 to 50 million pounds to Barcelona or for 60 million pounds to Tottenham or Arsenal? And I have to say, I'd rather lose the 10 million pounds to go to Barcelona. So I am kind of contradicting myself a little bit there. But I just don't want him to go to another English club. Now, speaking of a guy going to another English club, someone who did come to an English club from abroad was, of course, Jean-Kevin Augustine, who came over to Leeds United. And Mr. Matt Dawson here is making a massive, massive claim in this article comparing Arnaud Calimuendo to Jean-Kevin Augustine. Uh, the dynamic flunk has popped up with two vital goals in the final day of the Premier League season as Jesse Marsh's side rescued themselves from Red Relegation. However, we do need to reinvest in the attacking level of the squad. And one man we are looking at is Armand Calamuendo. Described as absolutely deadly by talent scout Jacques Kulig, it's clear to see that the 32 goals to his name at the age of just 20, he would be an effective present up front for Leeds. However, there are some worrying vibes when it comes to his deal as it could well evoke memories of a certain Jean-Kevin Augustine. Illegal trials played out over the Frenchman's deal. Obviously, we're still in legal... Um, legal battles with the Red Bull club over there and uh, basically he's saying look he's coming from the French League Augustine coming from the Bundesliga not proven in the Premier League not necessarily proven at the elite level of competition I mean John Kevin Augustine couldn't even really do it in the championship that was the funny thing here and I think that is the main basis of his argument also the fact that he hasn't you know he's a young guy and he hasn't played heaps and heaps of games and there are apparently question marks over his potential long-term fitness with Cali Muendo. however for me I think this is uh, a little bit um, over egging it a little bit like you say here he bagged 13 times in the 21-22 season I, I I don't think that this is a fair evaluation at all. And so far, I'm waiting for some more information on this. I will let you know the second more information comes out on Aleman Galamuendo. However, right now, little bit ha little has, should I say. However, information that is vastly developing is Leeds' interest in this man, Nathan Collins. Apparently, Leeds United are ready to spawn Nathan Collins. That is right, the big boy, Nathan collins Zinio. Given that Burnley aren't exactly in a position to pull the strings here because of their current position, it wouldn't be surprised if they lost the 21 year old this summer Collins if I'm looking at world class players like him I would compare him to Matthias De Ligt now this is a big 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 comparison comparing him to Matthias De Ligt I heard someone comparing him to Virgil van Dijk the other day those are a bit crazy if you do ask me they are a little bit crazy however he is a tall defender he is strong he would definitely help us set piece wise because we are terrible aerially when it comes to defending set pieces he could help us out there he does have have Premier League experience he would be a very good acquisition and it depends on whether you think that Leeds need a centre-half or not I really want to hear what you guys have to say do you think that we need a centre-half do you think that a centre-half is necessary do you think we're too overstacked in that position obviously you're looking at Stroik you're looking at Cock you're looking at Lorente you're looking at Cooper just to name four you've got Cresswell still lurking around there you've even got Held who can feature at the centre-half we've got a lot of central defenders but the question I have to you is are any of them good enough or do we need a little rejigging of the system shall we say although this does look like a good man to rejig the system according to the same publication just a few hours after that Newcastle United the sneaky little buggers have decided 25 30 million pounds is too much for Jack Harrison but are now considering to bid 25 million pounds for Nathan Collins this really throws it into jeopardy considering how much we how much we need a centre half like we were just talking about with how many players as we do have in that position already, yeah, 25 million pounds, you're going to have to scratch your head and at least deeply consider this. And apparently, Eddie Howe's Newcastle are seriously considering a bid for the Leeds United targets, Nathan Collins. According to the Mirror, Leeds, Aston Villa and Wolves also are in the race for him. However, it does look like now Newcastle are the favourites to get his signature, which is looking a little bit scary. However, there could be another defender that is set to come to Leeds instead 
instead for cheaper and that is Phil Jones would you bloody believe it mate Manchester United report defender could leave for bitter rivals Leeds United Phil Jones might be on the move this summer with Southampton and Fulham also interested in the ex-England man he is an England international of course he's barely played for Manchester United last year but apparently according to Mark Leeds Southampton and Fulham are all keen on signing him and Leeds are actually the favourite this is the one of those crazy stories I've heard in the past five years Phil Jones to Leeds if it happens I will shave my bloody moustache I do not think that will happen at all but hey stranger things have happened in the world of football but let me know which signing you want to make down in the comment section down below it has been your boy JT and I will see you but ever soon au revoir my brothers and my sisters